Hello, everybody. So I'm actually surprised that we managed to beat the Lietuba basketball game and get everybody here. I asked Arun, are you sure we can battle with the basketball? But uh, Andres was telling me there is now a number one religion in Lithuania, ICOs, and a number two is basketball, right? I cannot tell that this out loud, you know. Okay. Basketball is still number one, but no, okay. Okay. not here. So welcome, everybody. Uh, we'll try to avoid the slides. I'm Cristobal Alonso. I'm the patron of Wise Guys, which is, we call ourselves the leading B2B accelerator. Uh, and I, although I hate slides, I'm going to use just three or four slides to introduce the theme. I'm going to give a couple of my points of view, and then I will let much better looking and much intelligent people on both sides uh, talk much more than me. But basically, uh, if you look at this slide here, and I've been working today with, I will tell you a couple of secrets of what we're trying to research today together with Civita. But basically, the, we have seen ICOs raising about 15 times more than the entire last year. And probably this is only the, okay, that's funny. Uh, Darius is playing with us. I'm not, too far, I'm not talking. Anymore. So uh, this usually happens with me, I'm too fast. Anyway, so I don't need slides. Yeah, this is not blockchain. I don't need 10 minutes per, per block. I, I mine much faster. Yeah, it's going crazy. Anyway, um, so basically we have seen the ICO funds about 15 times more than last year, and this is only until August. So probably by the end of the year, actually the, the amount of money that will be raised will be 30 or 40 times far, more. Having said that, the total amount of money is 1.5 billion, around 1.5 billion. Do you know how much money venture capital raised last year? How much money was raised through venture capital last year? Okay, so it's about 100 times more. Okay, so though, of course, this is very hot and amazing. This is still nothing compared with the amount of money that is flowing today in the, in the environment, right? So a lot of people think this is going to crash soon enough. I don't think so because this is still a fraction of the money that is being used to raise projects on an ongoing basis. But, and now it's not going to change, but let's see. Yep. But obviously, the, um, the amount of people that wants this money is also increasing, right? So there was, in total, about 200 projects that raised money through ICOs until basically this summer. And there is more than 600 projects raising money. And only as a sample, I asked three guys here today when I came in, and they're all doing an ICO, and their names were not in that list. So probably there is about half of these people in this room who is doing their ICO in the next three to four months, or they will do an ICO after they leave this one because they think it's going to be super easy to raise uh, money, right? So there is going to be a lot of activity happening. Uh, but there is another thing that this reminds me a lot. And most of you are very young to remember, but this reminds me to the IPOs in 98, 99, and 2000, in which basically after Netscape happens, everybody thought, shit, with one basically white paper sent to the right investment bank in New York, I'm going to do an IPO and raise more than 100 million euros. And you know what? It happened. There was pets.com and all boo.com and all that shit that got so much money with not even a prototype. Sounds familiar? Okay. So this has happened before, okay? And you know what happened after the IPO? Burst? Okay, there were some things happening, right? But at the end of the day, the industry continues. And I think this is a phenomenon that is going to here to stay, but we're just seeing the first wave. This just has started. And I think the second thing that is actually, to me, very interesting is that if you, we were trying to say, where are the projects, where are the ICOs coming from? You know, how many are coming from the US? How many are coming from the UK? How many are coming from this region? And this region can be Baltics, Ukraine, Russia. Let's call it that, the region, right? Um, if you look at where the companies are registered, it's UK, US. If you go to almost all the white papers, after the third name, you start finding out the Bisenko, you start finding out the Civicius, Okay, so basically 90% of the technical talent behind these ICOs today is coming from this region. So to me, it's actually, we have awakened the talent 
and the imagination of the people here to think, now we can make this happen. Because I've been actually working with the startups for many years now, and the number one complaint by everybody in the region was there was no capital. They have amazing projects, but there was no capital. I cannot do my project because there is no capital. And suddenly now, everybody thinks there is capital. So now we can make our dreams happen, which is good. It's a good start. Then we have to execute them, right? This is a bit more difficult. But at least this is capturing our imagination. It's actually making what the American happens in 1996, which kids were dropping out of school, not even finishing college, leaving their companies because you need to catch the right. You cannot let it go. The money is here now. Now is the time to try to do my dream. And if I burn myself, I can't go back to school. I can't go back to Barclays. I can't go back to whatever other thing I was doing. Okay? Sorry about that one. Uh, you know, so it is actually coming there. Uh, maybe I can manage to get my last slide. So a lot of pe people. But this one is the last one that I wanted to show, actually. Of course, we hear a lot about the project that raised 25 million, 50 million, 100 million. But when I'm looking at the statistics, I see actually a lot of small projects also raising money. So this is not yet disturbing the VC industry. It's actually touching the early stage, the angels. It's actually touching the early stage funds. So a lot of people are saying, why bother to go to an angel and spend one, two, three, four, five months talking to people if I can just put the effort on actually writing a good white paper or a terrible white paper, uh, put it out there and see if I get lucky. Okay, it's not as simple as that, but actually, and the funny second part is that angels don't know what we're talking about. And I sampled actually 50 of our investors in the last two weeks and I said ICO. And 90% of them told me, what are you saying? And it, one is my accent, okay? But once you understand I was saying ICO, say, ah, okay, what is that? So a lot of, we think this is everybody knows about this. Almost nobody knows about this. Even in the investment community on the early stage, this is still out of the league. So a lot of these guys are actually going to be joining ICO funds. A lot of the angels will go on because it's going to be competition. Because if you don't fund the early stage projects through basically ICOs, you might miss 50% of the companies that will not raise money traditionally. So we are actually seeing a disruption of an industry that if you think about it, was not disrupted since more than 20 years. Angel investment looks the same that it looked 20 years ago. VC funds look the same that 20 years ago. So people think, oh, with blockchain, we're disrupting fintech. We're disrupting education. No, no, we're disrupting investment models. And then industries of the, each project will disrupt each other's industries. And that's what I think is actually fascinating. And I'm really interested to see, you know, we are actually thinking ourselves, how do we now invest in the startups? In the accelerator, they said, I don't need your money. I'm going to do an ICO. But they said, but, okay, but how are you going to do your project? They said, I have no idea. That's what I'm talking to you. So in fact, we are looking about, well, how are we going to be exiting our projects? How are we going to be putting these tokens into our fund model? Because a lot of the startups are going to keep coming for the advice and they're kicking the butt to accelerate their projects, but many of them are not going to ask for the money because they just already raised the money. They're going to raise the money in a different way. And also, should we just even not give you money, but give you tokens and do our own accelerator in which we invest in a particular vertical, and the token actually is a way to increase the value of all the startups because we create a network, right? So is disrupting acceleration, early stage, is going to be disrupting all the investment part. I think that's what is going to be fa fascinating for us in the industry initially. So having said that, I think it's time for you guys to start talking. But obviously, Laura, you have to go first. Thank so you. So anyway, as I will pronounce the last names of each of you terribly bad, as you will pronounce my name terribly bad. I will only just call you by the first name and you guys can introduce who you are, why you're here, and what the hell do you know about ICOs? Hey everyone, my name is Laura Cornelia Navendinova, and I help companies with marketing, with PR, with communication, and I'm helping one of the ICOs, Token Desk, which I don't know why logos we're not seeing. Where are our logos? Oh, here it is. Yeah, so I'm helping with basically marketing and how not to look a scam. Hello, my name is Ginteros. 
I am from CM Startup Token Desk, and um, uh, this is our first ICO. Uh, the main idea of our our project is uh, came from uh, Bilate LT, as you know, this kind of a project, and uh, because in the ICOs market is. Uh, there are some problems because there are many, many publishers who are publishing the ICOs like CoinDesk uh, or CoinScheduler, but you don't have a possibility to buy directly ICOs there. And we uh, start the project, new project, uh, trying to crowd, sailing, uh, crowd uh, funding from ICOs to make the direct marketplace for purchasing tokens or ICOs. And the main, uh, main difference uh, from uh, Coin Schedule and, and our project is that you can come here, make an account, and directly to buy it uh, without need to go to different uh, wallets like Ethereum wallet or exchange uh, systems. The main idea of our is just like this. In short, you come, you choose the ICO, you invested everything with only a couple of clicks. And then you can see how your future income is decreasing or decreasing. Who knows? So just one shop way. Let's call it like this. Okay. Hello, guys. My name is Andrus Putna. So I will just give a little bit my background of myself so you could get an idea what I do. So I came from the company called Hostinger. Maybe some of you are familiar with it because we are global. And uh, I was like previously the web developer uh, for about 10 years. Uh, for the last two years, I was responsible for the project called Zero Zero Web Host. I believe there are some users of ours here in this stage. And uh, basically, I was responsible for increasing the traffic for the, for the website. Uh, after we did a lot of job on that on that area, we thought, what what can else we can do? And uh, after that, we thought, we looked at our client base and we saw that it was like mostly young people that are willing to be educated, willing to learn. And we thought, uh, well, we have to do like a learning platform for for them to to learn and to become real web developers. So basically, this is the history of my my profession and uh, based on that I had an ability my company dedicated me to open like a new project which is the the same project that we started in the, our parent company and uh, basically it means uh, building platform like Coursera but with blockchain by blockchain I mean uh, having smart incentives that will drive students to participate and engage more with the course. Based on our statistics, uh, only 5% of uh, students finish uh, the course in the Coursera. For example, if you enroll into some study or course, it's like a very big chance that you will not finish it. So our job at BID degree uh, is to incentivize students to be like more engaged into the course. So this is the one part, looking from the perspective of the student. And looking for the perspective of the companies, because our project wants to connect and reduce the gap between the employer and the, the student to be accepted more easily. So from the perspective of the company, uh, we want to uh, prepare only those courses that are relevant to the business. So basically, this is our main idea, and I would like to take an opportunity and to just pre-announce our project called Bid Degree. So let's start from basic to more complex. So the, uh, because I don't know how much people knows in general. So let's imagine, and you don't have to imagine because you're going to do it, and I will go this side also. That you want to launch an ICO. What are the two, three, four things that you need to take in place from a business point of view, from a technical platform point of view, and from a marketing point of view? Uh, okay. Uh, so there are, as you mentioned, there are three parts, yeah? So from the business perspective, we have like an established business. We are online for 10 years. We have like a client base of 29 million uh, clients which are willing to learn. 
So uh, we are uh, having a base. We are not starting from, from scratch, you know. We are not like, uh, we are bootstrapped and we are successful. We are making profits. So this is our base. Uh, then we have a marketing team which is already present in our company and we are going to use all these resources that we learned, that we know. We know how to increase traffic. We know how to maintain them. We, we know what is churn rate is and all those keywords that we use in our daily job. Uh, so this is the second part and uh, the market, uh, apologize, let me remind me the, 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 technical the technical platform. Okay, so basically our, our technical platform is pretty simple. It's Coursera. We have a lot of a lot of like courses. Our main goal is to have world best class uh, uh, courses. We will invest our big big money into attracting all the good universities to collaborate with us to to provide users best quality courses. And our goal is to incentivize students to finish those courses with smart contracts and blockchain. So, Laura, what are you going to advise Andreas that he needs to do between now as the official announcement of the pre-IPO, pre-ICO, and the moment of the ICO from the marketing point of view? So what are the key things in marketing that will drive investors into the ICO? So, first of all, you can have the best project, the best team. Everything can be just good about your I know, idea, but... You, maybe you can't just communicate it. So you should learn, first of all, how to very, very easily in one, two sentence say what it is. For example, right now, as I've been researching a lot of different cryptocurrencies, uh, cryptocurrencies or ICOs or anything in blockchain, I just don't know what it is. I don't, like, I have a technical degree, but still, for me, it's hard to understand. So how do you expect a simple person who is sort of interested in ICO and cryptocurrencies to understand it? If he or she will come to your website and in the first, I don't know, two, three minutes, they don't know what you're doing. So make sure it's very, very simple to understand. Like, for example, Andres, right? Yes. I'm, sorry, I'm so, very bad with names. Yeah. Just explain. It was Coursera, I can, but I, I can give you one sentence description yeah. of the project. Bit degree is a small diploma that you will receive after you complete a small part of the course. Did every one of you understand what it is? You sure did. So that's the first thing. The next thing is, of course, the website and your online presence. What you do when you learn about any kind of new company, you Google. So it's very, very important to see and know what is out there about you as a company and about every team member. Some of your team members might have a not very nice past, and that could actually, I don't know, go wrong. So make sure you know what is online about you. And the third thing, of course, engage with your potential investors. Uh, I worked with a couple of ICO and uh, Bitcoin companies, and what I also found out in the market, that a lot of especially technical people, they don't know how to communicate very, very simply and effectively with someone who potentially can invest big amount of money. So make sure you have someone from your team who is more into communication, but can also understand your project and can answer all of these very, let's say, serious and sometimes even hard questions very, very simply. I think that's three top things that I would recommend. How important is marketing budget for your online presence during the time of the ICO? If you will not do any kind of marketing, how will potential customer, potential investor will know that you're actually legit? Because there was a lot of different companies who just raised, let's say, five million, seven million, but then they end up being in Bahamas just having a vacation. So you have to make sure you have those articles, those publications about you. Start small. Start with like cryptocurrency and like Bitcoin websites like uh, crypto, what is one, like Coindesk or these kind of things. And then build it up a little bit bigger and bigger. Get some publication even here in Lithuania in like Delphi or 15 minutes. That should be a start and then try to get bigger media outlets, like the biggest ones, like let's say TechCrunch or like Forbes, have you know, post just right about you. And it's not that hard. A lot of uh, Lithuanian companies got coverage there. You just have to have really good strategy. And then everyone will at least have this like feeling that, oh, you're doing something that is actually legit. That is something they should at least consider to invest. Any more questions? Yes. Uh, what about the advisory board 
because when we are looking at the white papers, uh, usually the advisory board is about five times bigger than the team. Uh, and with all these uh, interesting profiles with the European commissions, blockchain experts. So what, are, what, what is people trying to build into the advisory board? Community support, credibility for the business, and what are you working on your advisory board for your ICO? Uh, if we're talking about team, uh, the, I think the main idea uh, that we uh, talk about three steps, what you need to do uh, with a good ICO, that the uh, technical thing that you must to have in your board very uh, good technical uh, people. Uh, second thing is uh, the good uh, PR. Uh, you must understand that PR, if you do something interesting and nobody knows about it, it's, it will be a problem if you are SEO. And, uh, and uh, another thing is uh, that you must to have a good uh, uh, chief executive who managed the manager, who managed all these things, and, uh, uh, and you will, will be the, the good and, and, uh, and you raise money what you, what you need. Uh, the, if we talk about advisors board, I think uh, the advisors are um, such kind of the new trend. And uh, in, uh, in advisors board, uh, you invited the persons who have a good uh, experience. It's some, some, um, it's some uh, skills where, are no in, where, where you don't have in your board directly. Because uh, sometimes you need special skills solely, you know, for 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 small amount of the time, and it's a better thing to find some people from outside and to give advice for them, and uh, you can implement it in your in your in your uh, in your project. And these people are not working uh, all day; they only are like advisors in some some some. Um, some more uh, religious field. How do you plan to maintain the value of your token once you launch? Because one thing is to launch and get the money, fine, but basically you need to maintain the value of the token if you're not providing any other type of benefits that the possibility to trade it. So what's your plan on okay. that idea? Yeah, okay. Uh, the plan is pretty simple and actually it's not new. Uh, we are continue to do the same thing as we are used to do for 10 years. So basically, uh, if you want to increase the value of the company, which, which token actually represents, for in my opinion, token actually represents the appreciation of the company. Like shares, you can think of it like shares. And uh, the token, when it shows appreciation, that means that you are doing a good job as a company in general. So we are using the same strategy here to increase traffic, to make people trust our company, to, and basically to know our company. So there are two steps to, to buy. If, in order to value or the value of the token to increase, you need to have two things. People must know about this token, and it has to trust this token. So, and basically that works for every company. So that's what we are planning to do. Questions? Before I keep asking questions. Yes. Sorry, I might repeat your question if you want. Okay, the question was why do I need, why do Bitdegree need blockchain technology for this? Okay, so. Uh, First of all, you please visit our website called bitdegree.org. Uh, we explained everything why we need that technology, but in short, uh, that uh, I have little time to explain here on the stage, uh, so first of all, but I will try to explain it shortly. Uh, the blockchain technology is needed to incentivize, uh, incentivize students to learn on the platform and they receive, they actually receive this token for the achievement they unlock during the course. Later, they can spend this token on the third party services. For example, like our company, they, we provide uh, domains, hosting, VPSs, different kind of services, and we can accept those tokens for the thing that you learned. And we receive another cha marketing channel 
like, for example, you, exactly you, if you learned the exact uh, course, which we sponsored as a company, and you find it interesting, and we, we are, like, making a, a promise that we will accept the token that you learned on our platform. Any questions? Please raise your hand so I will bring the mic for you. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I raise my hand. So one, the, until now, a lot of the times when you were raising money, you, don't, you not only wanted the money, you wanted the advice, you wanted the network, you wanted what uh, investors could bring you in terms of connections. So if now we all shift into ICOs, we lost that one. So what have you been your considerations? And I have my opinion if money is smart or not smart, but I'm not going to put it at the public for the time being. Uh, but what are your considerations? Why are you considering, have you even thought, oh, let's just not do an ICO, but look for money first or after? And Ginter, the same for you. So why are you not looking for traditional investors and going straight into an ICO? And will you look for investors afterwards? First of all, uh First of all, uh, we are a SEO project, and for us it's very interesting to participate in SEO directly because our whole project is the related with ICO other projects, and uh, this is the main uh, thing why we're going here there. Uh, from an, uh, another point of view is uh, a little bit simplest way to raise money, I, we think, because uh, we're interested in, uh, in cryptocurrencies and in ICOs uh, about one year, and we participate like investors and uh, working with, uh, with crypto and blockchain directly. And uh, uh, I think that this is the main, main things why we're doing the, uh, these things. And Laura? I would say like this, when you go to investor or VC fund, yes, you're getting smart money, how they call it. You're getting some kind of expertise, know-hows. But on the other hand, if you're a successful company who already raised, let's say, some amount of money through ICO, and you have actual legit product, you can easily go to many, many interesting, very qualified advisors who are just out there, and you can find them LinkedIn and a conference, and I, I tell you, they will definitely help you out. It's not that hard these days to get mentorship, to get some kind of expertise, even when sometimes some students write to me and ask me, so how we can do like marketing communications, I would gladly give them like an hour, two hours of my time and just advise them. And there is a lot of other people who are really, really experienced and they will help you out just like that. So it's more about how people are determined to get what they want, because all there. Let me challenge that a little bit. Uh, yes, if I want to give three or four hours, but if I want somebody to be on my board for the next two years, in the past we used to give them 1% of our company. The guy is 59 years old, and I'm going to tell him, I'm going to give you 1,000 tokens. Do you think he's going to be, so how are we going to change the retribution? Are we really all going to go into tokens and to Bitcoins? Uh, so how do you envision that before the mentoring, but the real advisory boards, the real payments of people, are we all going to use our tokens? Or what's your vision on that? It's for both of you. I, can I just uh, on, bring back that topic that why we skipped the VC capital? So, because my thought was on that one still. <laughs> okay, so we skipped the VC capital because uh, we actually had like a, a project uh, running just even before the ICO keyword appeared on the market actually. So basically we had a project running, we had an MVP and we had a team gathered and we had a budget for the marketing, okay? So, and then this, all this ICO stuff popped up and we thought, why don't we just use all this, uh, all this marketing budget to the ICO uh, targeted area and uh, then we will see how it will go and after that, we will get the exposure to all those VC capitalists also. We are not saying that they are going to disappear or something, but, but this is the starting point. And uh, your, your next question, I apologize. I think Lara wants to cover oh, yes. that one. Okay. I would say, I, I would bet it's easier when you already uh, raise some capital or you have the product to get some, as you said, like old guy to advise you on like an equity or some kind of profit share, then when you have basically nothing, no money, just an idea and a, sm and a small team, get them to invest their money and also advise. 
So I think it's just easier when you already have this base ground and then you're, you come to him and you're like, okay, so I already raised this amount of money, we have this business plan, this is our team, this is MVP. Could you help us out or not? We don't ask for money and we can even give you like a small amount of it. I think it's easier. So one more and you guys choose. What if you fail raising the money on the ICO? Are you going to raise a second ICO? Are you going to go into a, because you know, I already know some people that were raising the ICO and they realized through the process they had done it wrong. They got something wrong, said let's let it fail and change the terms. Or other people say, no, let's not look for traditional money or let's just abandon the project. So what are you guys on that one? Um, uh, if we're talking about Token Desk, we start to develop this project and uh, we, we will do this project without money. We can do it because we have the experience. We done it without the ICOs, the Bilate project, and I think uh, we ha we can do and token desk. But definitely, it will takes more time. It's uh, it takes. Uh, I think maybe we can start very. We can do a good start without money because you must to invest in in the same marketing. You must to invest in uh, development and uh, money. It helps to do it. But uh, we will do this project in any way. It's, it's, it depends only on time, that's all. It's similar for us. I mean that, that we're, we're just thinking uh, about uh, uh, speeding up the process, basically. Yeah. So if you want to have a really good quality content on your website like Coursera, like, uh, like other, other uh, massive online education courses, uh, we have to invest into good good content. So basically we're going to use all that money. If we are not going to raise enough, we have a soft cap for f defined. And if we are not going, uh, not going there, so we'll think after that. We have, yep. we have one question here. So I'm here. I'm here. Uh, so I would like to challenge your idea further, basically, and uh, you mentioned that for listening to the course, you are getting your tokens, right? And basically, I could easily exploit this idea by running a bunch of bots and uh, who would listen to your course, and I just go to exchange and sell it out. So how do you protect from this scenario? Actually, this is the, the second thought, the second question, most commonly asked question. So it's like not uh, that uh, you know, strange for me to hear this question. But basically, uh, we have a solution prepared to ensure that and to and basically it, it, it includes peer reviewing that you actually learned what you, what you heard or what you uh, studied. We have a process to ensure that the, that the student actually learned what uh, he was learning and in the small steps. So we have a process for that. Uh, how much money you are going to spend on ICO? The question is for me? Basically... For yeah. bit degree. For bit degree. Okay, so we are in the very, very early stages and uh, I cannot tell this right now because we need to meet a lot of people and talk to them. So basically, we are just announcing the name, we're announcing the website. You can read our one pager, you can get the idea, and we are looking to everybody who is willing to give us feedback. Interest, how much money you have to raise with your ICO? It's the most interesting question, yeah. The, <laughs> uh, I think that if you want to start ICO there now, nowadays, because it's, uh, you must to spend uh, uh, less, uh, not less than 100,000 euros only in marketing. It's the uh, biggest, uh, um, biggest uh, part of the all money what you want to invest only in ICOs. If we don't talk about your ideas, we don't talk about, about your experience and uh, about your, in our case, to, to develop into your plat platform. And I think that in every week, uh, this minimum amount of money rising, because uh, uh, as, you, as we see, saw the, your diagram, the, uh, the all marketing uh, places in, in, the, in the internet are crowded, and uh, the price for, for, your, uh, for, for Google, for, for other things, uh, going up uh, every day, not only every week. And I can maybe Laura about marketing. Yeah, I'll tell a bit about marketing. So for example, 
it, you have your team, you have your idea, and then you need someone to do, let's say, marketing. Because basically, to find the good developers, it's not that hard, especially in Lithuania, well, when everyone here is like really, really good with computers. So, for example, you need a person, at least one or two people, who would just outreach journalists and ask for like stories for publications. Then, for example, if you work with crypto community and crypto media outlets, so the Usually they don't want to do it for free. They asked uh, some kind of like sponsored articles or they want to ask, basically they ask money. So the average article which they're selling is start from two, three hundred dollars just for one article in all the crypto communities and they then put them on the sponsored. Then if you want to put in some kind of ICO trackers, some of them ask for one, two, three, even bitcoins just for putting out there. So when you look like that, so just for this like basic, basic start, if you don't want to do a lot of hassle, you need to have at least 10,000 and that's a lot of money. Or you can try doing some kind of guerrilla marketing, you can try doing on your own, but then you have to have very, very strong team and it will be way more time consuming. And I was really mm, amazed that you told me that a lot of people are still saying that ICO is a new thing. I heard about ICOs. I think a year ago, and then everyone were already talking, oh God, it's too late, we have to do it as soon as possible. So even right now, one year later, people are trying to do it as soon as possible because if you don't get into that ship, it might already basically get blued and you're, you're stuck with your idea without any kind of funding because sooner or later, the money will gonna run out. So either you're doing it right now, either you're waiting for the next six months and then there are like 500 SEOs every, ICOs every day and you have to invest even more money into just letting your idea be visible. That's my take. I have a quick question. And uh, I can see about my about uh, our la la latest Lithuanian uh, ICOs, uh, about Bankera, maybe you all uh, heard about it. Uh, you can imagine, I, I search uh, every two weeks ago, start searching how they are going, and uh, if you're trying to write on a Google page, in search page, uh, the ICO only, uh, you always uh, saw the uh, Bankeras uh, advertisement and you can imagine I think that one click it cost about five euros maybe maybe more you can imagine how many how money they must to spend to, to, to ICO my name is Jeff I'm from the States and recently the SEC in the United States has come out and said officially that ICOs are security and that you have to be a certified investor in order to invest. Uh, I'm wondering what the legal and regulatory issues are within Europe and other areas, if you're familiar. The regulatory issues on, in the European Union, right? Uh, so basically, I cannot answer this question actually right now. We are looking at our, our token and not as a security. It will be uh, an, a, a more like a reward or a voucher or a coupon code. So that's why we're taking a different approach. And uh, just I will pass the question to the answer to that. Uh, this is, uh, as I remember, the, uh, the main question is uh, how you uh, write on your white paper and what you write about your token, what you produce in your ICO. And if you uh, do like your token will be like share, something like this, it could be that some problem because uh, you must to have some licenses for publishing shares and uh, to, to exchange it. And if your uh, all idea and your white paper will be like uh, the, your, the sh you don't talk more about your shares exchanging, uh, it look like, like uh, your, your tokens needs only for your project development. And you can do this in normal way, like like normal normal business. It's it's some 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 only one way how what I know about. Let's just to co uh, complement that, two things. Actually, one of the factors why I think people is rushing up is because they know that regulation will come. I actually disagree that money is going to run out. I think the money is going to be there. There might be no money for stupid projects. Uh, but I think the money for good projects is still going to be there. But right now, being unregulated, 
the speed in which you can launch the project and collect the money is extremely fast. The moment we're going to be in a regulated market is going to be much similar to IPOs, in which you spend about three, four months just clearing up all the regulatory part and in basically becoming an accredited investor, accredited body, etc. So I think that's one of the reasons why there is a speed right now, but it's still not in place in the EU, it's still not in place. It's not even in place in the US. In fact, the SAC has says, I'm going to do it. Okay, they raised one case in which they already sent a, basically a penalty to somebody, they didn't take them even to court. They just put a penalty to somebody, so they're signaling, be careful. And that's why right now everybody in ICS is putting, we don't take US uh, holders' money, which in fact is impossible to prove if the money is coming from the US, but you have to put it in your white paper so your lawyer says yes, you can do it, right? But what I agree with you was interest is like, if tokens are used specifically just as equity, but just basically with a different format, at some point regulation is going to come to you because you're just going to be a security, right? If tokens are actually issued with a network effect in which the network is using the token per se to create transaction values, I think there's going to be a different regulation. There might be monetary regulation, there might be tax regulation, but I don't think there's going to be a security regulation. But I think we are still about easily six to 12 months away from regulation stamping up. I think that's the fact why a lot of people is hurrying. Okay? Because with 600 people already looking for an ICO, you already have enough competition if your project is bad. But you don't have regulatory competition, which means you're saving a lot of money in lawyers to start with, and a lot of money in time in which it can happen. So this is my point of view on the regulation. If there is any lawyers that wants to add to that, but lawyers usually don't say anything for free, so, <laughs> so it's not going to be happening. Okay. What do you think is going to be your biggest challenge to be successful in your ICO? Good marketing. So in short, yeah. But also the product, it should be, actually I, it's important to, to to believe what you do, that's, that's what we are doing. Basically, we're solving our main problem, to believe and to do good marketing. That's, a, that's, that's two points that I would point out. And uh, yeah, basically that. But this is funny, relief, because I have still to read a white paper in which the founders talk about why they're doing this project. All the white papers talk about the business model, the network, they put the least possible about the team, maybe a picture and a couple of uh, bullshit about cryptocurrencies knowledge, but I still to read a white paper that says, entrepreneurs are passionate about this project for reason A, B, and C. So it's funny, because I don't see it on the marketing material of any ICO until now. I think uh, it, the, the white paper structure will, will change in time. It will mature to something. Uh, because what we are seeing now is like the same, the same content rewritten many, many times and everybody is doing the same. The website's looking the similar, like all the all one-pagers, uh, white papers, uh, somebody introducing one-pagers and something like that. The structure is pretty the same, but I think as, as we mature this, uh, this um, ICO uh, like uh, phenomena will mature, we have a, another, another white paper structure. There are one question on the marketing you haven't touched until now. What about the YouTube influencers? What about the influencer community that is working in a different way? So not the online community on the spending, no basically working on your own outlet of news, but what about the influencers in the community? How do you plan and how people should approach to convince them? And are all there ready to influence for a price or are there real influencers that are actually looking for good projects? So when you talk, for example, about influencers, I see them as advisors. Because basically, if you know someone in crypto community or in some other industry where your project, your ICO is, you need to get them. So then you can see sort of your potential investors. Hey, we have this guy and he worked in this industry for 20 years and he, uh, he agreed to be on a part of our team. So we might be legit. We might know what we're talking. So it's more about even marketing and presentation then, because you don't know actually how much that uh, advisor will gonna actually work with the company, whether he or she is really passionate about it, whether they're just for the money. Because I know like in the market, usually in the, uh, advisors or like influencers for endorsement ask up to one, two percent, which is a lot of money. Of course, if they are good, if they're like really, really high quality. And it's even sometimes trendy for them because I talked with a lot of uh, influencers who 
back some of the ICOs, they kind of feel like it's trendy. Like, oh, I'm backing this ICO. These are cool kids. They're doing something. And I'm sort of like advising, sort of feeling like important. Is it actually a is it actually a thing that, oh, this company has like a lot of advisors, they're totally legit and it's all like good about them? I'm not sure. I think you should ask like, the team and of course think of, uh, you should all think when you're doing an ICO, how can each of, each of those like uh, advisors, influencers actually benefit you? How are you going to use that person's name, that person's picture who's on your website for your own advantage, what you're taking? And make sure you are communicating that to everyone. Because if you would see a website with like 20, 30 uh, influencers, advisors, and you don't know why they're there, it might also raise suspicions. And getting back to your like initial question, usually they ask money. Some of them want to do it for the idea, but most of them, yeah, they need like percentage. Some of them want to even money up front. But then you should also ask yourself, do you need someone who doesn't believe your idea and want to just get cash? Yeah, and some influence ones uh, uh, who are working on your project like uh, like advisors. Uh, many advisors asking not only the money but uh, your tokens because uh, you're starting from that. And, and in our project, they think that the tokens uh, you can uh, you can uh, pay with your tokens for your team because in uh, I think every second I see all you you can saw in smart contract the the formula that. 10 or 5% of the tokens goes to team. And the influence or advisors are like team member. And this is the main thing why they are in this project and why we are working there. And uh, maybe another one, another thing uh, why the influencers is uh, important because uh, you can uh, try to answer the question, what is the investor of ICOs? Because if I ask uh, there are uh, how many people here have tokens yet. You can open, okay. I think four people only. And you can imagine uh, the person who have token or who, who buying the tokens, he's uh, not like normal entrepreneur or investor uh, because you must to understand about cryptocurrency, you must to have uh, different wallets, you must to uh, be like the influencer in this in this community, and I think the very early ICOs was uh, published only in the special special uh, blogs blogs like Reddit or blog, or Bitcoin Talk, and uh, every information about some cryptocurrencies and news you can find only only there. And uh, I think in this time they are not more not very important like like. Uh, six months ago, and now the more important uh, goal for the marketing, for the, for the, for the digital media. I think uh, influencers plays a huge role in marketing, and uh, every ICO should uh, invest into having more of them. Your influencers. Uh, we have a guy who is working on that. <laughs> Has he done it before? Is he coming from a traditional marketing background or how have you found he's, this guy? He's like a similar guy like you, I believe. He's like from Civita and he's working with startups and uh, he's like doing all the pitches. So yeah, we have a guy who is approaching everything, everyone he can. We start losing people. I don't know if they want to see Lithuania second half of what's going on. But anyway, uh, more questions from the... ICO. I mean, is if you would like to buy shares or tokens, so how can you participate in that? Okay, the question, I will repeat the question because the question was without a microphone. Is there a restriction to participate in the ICO? Yes. Uh, currently, without regulations, there is no restrictions. For example, I have four tokens and uh, I never provided my, my, my personal details, but I have the tokens. How, how can you buy tokens? So basically every ICO provides their own way currently and you just visit their website, read the instructions and just try to understand what they're trying to say. Yeah, uh, and uh, 
this is a question maybe for us because why we are developing this project and uh, the one most problem is if you don't understand nothing about cryptocurrency and you want to participate in the ICO and uh, to invest, it's quite a difficult thing because you must to open uh, waves or adhere wallet for your token. You must to go to some way in the Google and to try to find your interesting ICOs in many, in many publishers who are publishing the ICOs like uh, CoinSchedule, there is no category, there is no categorized ICOs. You must to scroll, scrolling all of them and trying to find what's interesting. Uh, uh, and uh, another, the most, uh, most, uh, a uh, bad thing for the customer is that you have the possibility to buy directly it on your platform, like in Kickstarter or, or in other such kind of uh, crowdfunding platforms. And uh, why we doing this project is to do uh, the one main uh, platform where you can to buy directly without uh, needs to open uh, different wallets, going to changing uh, like your Bitcoins to the Ethereum and uh, sending it. And uh, I, try me, I try to borrow, and now I bought many different uh, tokens because I need for, for, for my project uh, to have uh, some experience. And there are interesting things that you bought it and you're receiving only the mail that said thank you. We will uh, send for you information how you um, got it. That's all. And what, you know, you're sitting on a computer looking on a screen and thinking. Bad thinking, you know. You think, what, well, that's, what that's, I, that's, what that's I the done, beauty, what that's I the beauty of the blockchain, you know. Yeah. You just trust. <laughs> and you don't have a possibility somewhere to look there, what you buy, where you invest, and you're sitting looking and said, okay, go next, you know, but this is, the, the, I think, the main problem for investors. And as, as I talk uh, uh, previous, the, uh, many of the investors now in the, uh, in the ICOs is from the influencers uh, which, uh, were, which working with the uh, cryptocurrencies. And I think that many people who want to participate, they need some, um, uh, some, some, uh, products like like us because you don't maybe you don't need to to understand about cryptocurrency you want to only invest in some interesting project like you know like uh, we power or something like that and and uh, you must to learn how to open a Ethereum wallet to checking in blockchain you know it's a difficult thing how many Uh, uh, if we're talking the, about platforms, uh, there is no platforms with a dialect to purchase the token. Uh, there are only platforms we are publishing. Uh, there are some platforms who are starting to do it, but without the account. And I then, you know, it's a worst thing like, like uh, to buy directly from a, from a page because there are token lots. You can look at this. You, you have possibility to buy directly. But I think that uh, this, uh, this website is total, maybe scam, I don't know, because you only sending money. There is no account at all, and you open the, the, the QR codes and sending for them, and they writing for you only small, small letter for you. That thank you, that's all. So can you name a few ones uh, which are trusted? Uh, <laughs> no, not no, competitors. Yeah. Say, no, no, don't uh, name we have some competitors, but uh, there is no one. There is no such one competitor for us because uh, uh, at least a few. I mean, to take a look. <laughs> okay, it's uh, one competitor. Token lot. You can look at that. Token. Token lot. You can look. Okay, yeah, and and uh, please try to invest. For them. And <laughs> you can call me <laughs> about your experience. You know, it's very interesting. It will be. One question. Uh, okay, so why do you think there is so many projects coming from this region? Why suddenly almost this region is becoming the ICO leader in terms of projects looking for money? Uh, the Baltics? The Baltics? Baltics, Ukraine, the whole, basically that's what the 80% of the developers are seeing right now most of the ICOs. So why is this happening here at that speed and at that volume if we are much smaller than many other places? I think uh, that, uh, like, 
uh, America and United, United States has a, had an ability with all these venture capitalists, and I think they are fine with that. But uh, most of the most of the people, like uh, in this in this our region, is not able to participate in in, for example, IPO. Yeah. So you have to have accesses. You have to have like a, I don't know people there and they physically be there for example put put uh, signatures etc and this uh, decentralization just puts you puts you where you are basically you don't need to move to participate so this is a huge opportunity for basically this does not mean this region i believe the region is this region is just for now but on the i don't know 2 or 3 years we will see the whole world connecting to this um, I think that if we are comparing the United States of America and, and our region, um, we have uh, less money than them. They, and, uh, you know, we, we have uh, less venture capital funds here. And if you want, if you are uh, uh, working like entrepreneur in America, you can many, many different funds, like you, you, can, you can choose them, I think. And in Lithuania, there are only several. Uh, a couple of them, and uh, the ICO is a very good advantage for, for, for uh, crowdfunding. I think the main reason why from this uh, region are so many, but I think it's not very m so, so many. From Lithuania, only five projects maybe. Yes? I'm Dimitrius from CoinGate. Andrews, I have a question for you. Uh, do you have any legal liability to deliver the product? No, we have a lawyer. <laughs> we have actually I'm not a lawyer, but we have a lawyer on our team who is responsible for all these questions. Actually, if you are uh, want to receive an exact answer, he's in the in the in our audit auditorium, so you can ask him directly this question. I'm not able I'm not I'm will not going to answer this question. Yeah, but just from the, how to say that, that, like practical point of view, let's say people put money into the product, into the idea, but then the liability and responsibility of the founders is to either deliver the product or not. So where, maybe it's the question for all of you, for all of you guys, how, uh, what is the liability for founders to deliver the product? Because eventually, I think, in the end, there, there's going to be a lot of problems with, with this particular... Can, can I ask... I, let me ask you then also back. If you're an angel investor and you give me money, what is my liability if I don't deliver? Possibly, if you're an angel investor, you will be incorporated with the company. And I don't deliver? The company goes bankrupt? And that's I, it? You have, the, you have the ability to check month by month, while with the ICOs you have but two I'm not years. delivering. I'm just using your money and not delivering. I Do have 90% of the board. You are not able to hold me out as a CEO. And what I say, I, agree, I know what you're saying. I think there is a moral right now, because there is no regulation. That's the beauty of the unbeauty of the ICO. It's a moral obligation that you're taking to deliver your project. But if you take your money to Bahamas, the only liability is a Serbian guy that might come from one of the guys and break your legs. But there is no, basically, it's an ethical thing, and they might have might taken a non-ethical route. But I think there is no legal and regulatory about you have the obligation to deliver. And people talk a lot about this. However, I don't think it's a huge difference with angel investment, in, in which there is, you have a contract, you have shares, and I think you have an obligation if the project goes well, to share the benefit. But if the project goes bad, there is no liability, but you lose your job and you bankrupt the company. And maybe, depending in which country, the bankruptcy might take you to court. But there is no liability if you don't execute. Do, do you think that with such an easy entry to the ICOs and to the fund rate, to the fund rate, uh, how to say it, crowdfunding, and to the people to invest in it, uh, do you think it will backfire at some, at some point? It will burn a lot of people, for sure. I think there's a lot of people who is entering the market to make a quick bat. And the money who's entering the market to, qu to make a quick buck, to make the money quickly, some people will get burned because they will enter too late. 
uh, if you ask me about, uh, do you need to look at it from an individual reputation point of view? So if you are not going to deliver your project and take the money to Bahamas, you're never going to raise money again in your life because everybody knows what you did, right? So, but this is a personal reputation as an entrepreneur. Doesn't change if you have crowdsourcing, ICO, or angel investors because any smart angel investors will call the previous investor and say, how was this guy? And he said, motherfucker didn't work a day in his life. Okay, maybe not investing in him. Oh, hey, we bankrupt the company, but he worked his ass off until the last day, took six months without salary, tried to make everything to happen, etc. So we have one life and one reputation. And I think you carry it with you. And I think a lot of people who is trying to take advantage of this, they will never raise money again. That is my personal view, and it goes into any product. But there will be scams. There are scams. There have been scams. Basically, I completely agree with the uh, and uh, liability is, is basically your reputation. So we are not making anything like super duper, you know, that you cannot understand. We are basically making an educational site with, which is like Coursera with blockchain incentives. That's it. It's pretty, pretty simple. And uh, our our team is able to do that right now. Basically, well, we have an MVP. So. From a technological perspective, our liability is pretty easy, actually. Uh, from the marketing perspective, it's a little bit different point of view. I want to add that there are already been sort of like almost scam scenarios or like big question marks. I just Googled, for example, one of the first uh, like bigger ICOs, like First Blood, if you heard of it, like eSports sort of like platform where players challenge the field and win rewards, whatever, they raised then in 10 seconds, 5.5 million. And after a couple of months, everything was quiet. And I, I don't know how it ended up later, but everyone's thinking, oh, there is 5 million in 10 seconds, and then they're gone. I don't know if they actually came back now in developing later, but there was these scams. So they are happening already. And now it's more up to you to vet the credibility of the team. Everyone, we can do something and then disappear to Bahamas. How can you know? You have to check the people, you have to check their backgrounds, talk to them, because usually they have like Slack channels or like Telegram or like even through like Facebook chat, just talk to them and ask. And if it is a legit company, they will answer even the hardest questions. Also check the Bitcoin talk forum, all the forums, what kind of questions are there? And also are they deleting like comments? For example, if you would ask them really, really hard question, it gets deleted. Okay, maybe they're doing a, a scam. So do the proof check, basically. Um, this one, in the, one of the advantages of crowdsourcing platforms is that once you do a campaign with them, most of them actually make mandatory reporting. So you have to, on a monthly basis, on a quarterly basis, report your progress, right? And I think something like that, either through regulation or through platforms, is going to come to the ICO in which there will be obligations to do reporting. However, as Andrew says, this is business as usual. If you're a good company, you report on a monthly basis on your website, on a quarterly basis, your traffic, your money, their revenues, their losses, everything, because that's how, normally you will need money again. And when you need to that one, if you haven't reported properly, you will never raise money again. But I think it will come from a regulation, but I think most of the people will have to do business as usual, which is a good, basically, uh, entrepreneur reports to their investors their progress. And the, a good marketing is if you are able to do that clearly and briefly, great. If you need five white papers and, uh, to do your reporting, nobody will actually follow you. Okay, a question. Can you put uh, real assets on ICO? For instance, company buys a Ferrari on the tokens which will be rented and will produce some income. Is it possible, or there is a legal regulation that company issues, for instance, shares like specific for their tokens, and then it can be returned to investors? Or... For what I, I made my own analysis, I follow the ICO sphere every day, and I see so many different ideas how tokens are used, and one of them is already actually present that you have told. It's called LA token. You can actually. Basically, you can just put a part of your Ferrari, like a tire of your Ferrari, into the token and just make it like a part of it and then sell it. Actually, I don't know how that legally works, 
but they are doing an ICO for that. I don't know how that physically works. <laughs> no, but actually, if you, I don't know about Ferraris, but following the, the uh, there has been a couple of funds who have done ICOs, and the fact actually put their portfolios as part of the assets. So for sure, you can actually token any assets. The question is, how can you claim the assets back in the future? And there is no regulation, so I think it's a very open field. But for sure, you can put any asset in a token. It's a guarantee of value, not just of a future project. Yeah, in terms of real value, I mean, for example, euros, dollars. So how do we reach the company? I mean, you buy your token, so how, how physical uh, money reach uh, your company? Via, I don't know, exchangers or? Yeah, you change it. Exchange. So, for example, you, you raise an ISO, ICO, uh, so where all that money will be? So basically, usually it takes about one month to basically that money be basically available for you. And then it's how fast you want to convert it into cash. But again, remember, it's a change rate. If you try to put all your coins into Bitcoins and Ether into cash very quickly, the token goes down. So you actually, part of your money, in fact, is going to go down, right? So you have to be careful about it. And in a normal in Bitcoin, there is so many people trading that what you trade doesn't really impact the change rate. On your token, you own all the tokens. So if you actually trade them all, suddenly the money goes down. If you own 20% of the token as your own team, be better careful about how you do it, right? So you have to be even careful about how you will convert into cash the basically token if you need the cash right away for your project. But you can convert it right away. So can you split your ICO, for example, part of that is your tokens and part of that Bitcoins or something like, like else? Or all of them should be like your, your own tokens? You can do almost whatever you want. Because that, that is as a safer, as safer way, I mean. Yeah, the safer way, but remember, there is a technical side of it. The more complex you, merge your, you, you make your project, the more complex you make your smart contract. Once you do your smart contract, it can never be changed. So you actually focus up on the technical side, you have a big problem in the future. So there is, an, there is an advantage about making your token simple and your smart contract simple and not start doing Ferrari tiers, combining with 10 different wallets of cryptocurrencies, etc. because it will be very difficult to manage on the technical side afterwards. Mm -hmm. So for example, in your two projects, so people will invest in, in your cryptocurrencies, I mean in your tokens, you will have them virtually and after that, you will decide to buy, I don't know, developers, buy uh, hardware and so on. So what is your plan for that? Uh, uh, if, you, uh, if we uh, funding the money and uh, we delivering for, for people, as you see, that our tokens and the price of the tokens depending on your project development. And, uh, but uh, the... Uh, cryptocurrency which will be funded for you it will be in your account and uh, you know and you can you must exchange it to your real fiat money like euros or, or, or dollars but from another point of view as you see uh, the uh, some amount of the tokens you are leaving for you for by yourself for your uh, other developments and you know uh, maybe after two years or three years you will need more money for other uh, project in, inside, like you no. Know, uh, if you must, you, if you want to improve some apps for your platform, or you must to improve uh, additional services, like you know, exchange the the token in the second market. As we talking about, we must to rise in the uh, second rise stage, and you must to have your, you must to leave some tokens for the future. And, but the money which you raised in the first stage, you will have in your currency wallets. Uh, the, how to exchange it, you know, if you want to exchange uh, like, you know, 10,000 euros, maybe it's not a problem. But if you want to exchange 1 million euros, I think it's a big problem. And now I can to see how to do it. But uh, from another way, there are many, many things. Uh, you, every month, there are many... Uh, many things what you can to buy directly with Bitcoin or Ethereum. And uh, uh, there are many IT developers, which companies which uh, uh, have uh, the, the employees in, 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 you know, from another side in the, in the world and they uh, have the salary in Bitcoins. There are, you know, real things. And usually teams give at around 90% or even more 
of their like shares, their tokens to investors, and they have like only 10% and 5%. So it's actually kind of small amount of money, which you have to if you want to cash out. But usually they have it like their own shares. And then other money is usually raised through like Bitcoins or Ethereum or even sometimes fiat currency. So they have like actual cash. And as Bitcoin volatility is pretty big, so unless you're going to sell, I don't know, like 10 million or even more, like I'm not sure how much you have to like raise and how much you would have to cash out that would actually uh, influence the price. It's basically the same as Forex. If you, if there's huge volatility, you can easily buy and sell. If there is like a very, uh, how to say, small volatility, then of course it's harder to just get the price you want to. Mm -hmm. So from experience, from IPO, not ICO. So how many, I mean, how usually people or teams actually uh, selling, not selling, but actually how much uh, percent uh, do they owning? I mean, how, how, how many percent uh, they still own of a company? But I, so I usual, think, usual yeah. IPO or usual ICO? So two, well, two basically, cases. I think Laura uh, gave you a range, but what I have seen is from 20%, the most aggressive teams, which say we will keep 20% of the tokens and they make a commitment of time, we will not convert them into fiat or into that one for a year or two or three, signaling basically long term we want to commit for the value of the token to teams that says 8% to 5% to almost nothing, right? But I will, I have read actually later in most of the papers more in the 10 to 20, more than in the eight, but basically it's how much you want to signal that you're going to take care of the value of the currency uh, on the token per se, versus how much you signal you're going to take the money and make the project happen it's a signal, and remember, it's like Forex with a big difference. You own initially all the Forex volatility because you're the one putting basically liquidity in the market. So if you dump it all, whoosh, it goes down, and then you don't recover, it will take you a long time because the fundamentals of the token value will take you months to deliver a project and to still see traffic, etc. And you will have a dumped basically value for a long time, which might give you bad PR. So you have to be taking into consideration that one, right? So do we have any last question before closing words? No, okay. Guys, do you want to do last statements? Pro promotion of your ICO, please invest. Basically, I'm just now promoting Talk and Desk, so we're gonna be uh, live on our website next week. So be sure to go check, check our white paper, which now I'm working on and it's killing me, and then feel free to give uh, feedback to us. It's gonna be really, really welcome. So yeah, and thank you everyone who stayed in the audience. Okay, thank you very much, and please visit bitdegree.org. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>